In this lesson, we're going to learn about um, asymptotes and lines of discontinuity, dealing with rational functions. So a rational function is a function who has a variable in the denominator. So it's written as a fraction. You'll see here the examples of f of x, g of x, and h of x. And what happens is um, we're going to be looking at these functions, and what's special about them is that there are certain values that don't work for these functions. So whenever you have a variable in the denominator, so for example, take a look at this, this f of x one right here. In this denominator, I have x plus 3. So what happens is if, you'll notice right here it says x cannot equal negative 3. To see what x cannot equal, you take what the denominator is and set it not equal to 0. So when I minus 3 from both sides, I would see that x cannot equal negative 3. The reason you set it not equal to 0 is because we can't divide by 0. So if this would end up being x divided by 0, I can't graph that. That doesn't exist. And so there are going to be places of, for these graphs where they don't exist. And so there's gonna, that's going to show up as L asymptote, which we'll talk about in a minute, or a hole, so a spot where it's not touching. So first we're going to talk about that just in this lesson. We're going to kind of see where those holes or asymptotes are. So look at the g of x equation. You can see that we have an x minus 1 in our denominator, so that's why it says x cannot equal 1, because we would again say x minus 1 cannot equal 0. So that's where they're getting that from. And if you want to think of it as the opposite of what's there, that would always work for you. And it also cannot equal negative 4. And then in our third example, h of x, it says the sine of x divided by x. So x, because it's just an x down here, x can't equal 0. So any other value for x would be fine, but x cannot equal the numbers that we list there. So you'll see in our notes it says rational graphs may have breaks in continuity, meaning they're not always traceable without picking up your pencil. So for example, if I have a normal, well not normal, but here's a cubic graph. If I was to trace this graph, I'm never picking my pencil up. So there's no break in continuity. For a rational function, an example of what one of those could look like is something like this. So if I'm going to trace this function, this, and this is all one function, even though there's two things here. When I go from here to here, I pick my pen up and then come over here. So this would be an example of a break in continuity. And so that's what our rational functions will look like. We've seen these barely before, so we're going to really study them more. A vertical asymptote, then, is a line that the graph of the function the line that the graph of a function approaches infinity. That's kind of worded funny. Um, these are determined by the factors that remain after simplifying the function. We talked about this really quickly in our first chapter we did this year. And what happened was we had some graphs, and we were trying to decide if they were functions when we were first learning if things were functions using the vertical line test. And we had graphs like this. And a lot of us were thinking that it didn't pass the vertical line test because of spots like right here. But what I told you was an asymptote is where it approaches, it's getting to, it looks like it's approaching that line. It keeps going, but it's never actually touching this line. And so that's what an asymptote is. And those are found, you'll notice here, it says found by the factors that remain after simplifying. So we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. A horizontal asymptote then would just be one that's this way. So like here's an example of a horizontal asymptote. Same idea. So one can be vertical, one can be horizontal. Removable discontinuity, which there's a couple ways you might see that written. Um, point of discontinuity is also a common term for that. That's a hole in the graph. So these are determined by the factors that we cancel when we're simplifying the function. So for example, I might have this graph, and all of a sudden I go like this, and then there's this hole, and then the graph goes on. And this would be the spot where x can't equal, because it makes the denominator 0. These will seem a little bit confusing until we actually apply this. So let's take a look here at this first problem. All we're going to do is identify holes or asymptotes. Okay, so for number one, first thing we do is simplify this fraction fully. So x squared minus 1 I would make into x plus 1, x minus 1. And then here, x squared minus 6x plus 5, when I factor that I'd get x minus 5, x minus 1. So we cancel similar factors, just like we learned earlier in this chapter. So this function, when it's simplified, is x plus 1 
over x minus 5. So we've simplified it. Then we're going to list any vertical or horizontal asymptotes. Whatever is left in your denominator is your vertical asymptote. We'll call that a VA. So my vertical asymptote, since I have x minus 5, I say what x cannot equal. So I'm going to say x cannot equal 5. Where did I get that? I took this x minus 5 and set it not equal to 0. So we're going to actually give the value instead of saying the factor. My point of discontinuity or my removable discontinuity we'll call our holes or you can call it RD if you want to say hole that's fine too it's the same idea. That's the factor that you canceled. This is the one students mess up on all the time. It's right here. The one that canceled. So I'd say x minus 1 cannot equal 0 so x cannot equal 1 and that's my removable discontinuity. So this would be considered my answers for this problem. I just want to explain for a second a few things about this. When I graph this problem, which we're going to do in our next lesson, I would have to graph the original problem here in order for me to see the hole because that got canceled. So the hole is not going to show up unless I graph the original problem before I cancel anything. The vertical asymptote is always what's left. Your removable discontinuity is always what got canceled. We never, ever, ever, ever care about our numerator. Our numerator can be zero as much as it wants. Zero divided by something is zero. So the only thing we will ever look at is our denominator. This up here does not matter to me. I don't care about it when I'm looking for my vertical asymptotes or my removable discontinuities. You'll notice I didn't list a horizontal asymptote for this one. Doesn't mean it doesn't have one, but we don't know how to find one. We are only going to learn how to find vertical asymptotes and removable discontinuities from the graph. If you keep going on in math, when you do pre-calc and calc, you will do um, horizontal asymptotes from the equation. But we're going to do ours just from the graph for this class because that's not something needed for us. So we will do those once we actually start graphing these. So number two, I want you guys to try. Pause the video, simplify it, and give me my vertical asymptote and my removable discontinuity if I have one. So when you did this, hopefully you got x plus 2, x minus 2, x plus 3, x plus 2 when you factored. And then when I could cancel, I would cancel the x plus 2's. So my function simplified is x minus 2 over x plus 3. My vertical asymptote would have been what was left in my denominator. So x cannot equal negative 3. My whole, or my removable discontinuity, is what got canceled. So x cannot equal negative 2. If you have any questions on this, make sure you talk to me tomorrow about that.